President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta yesterday held a lengthy meeting with the Raila Amolo Odinga in Mombasa. That meeting is actually not news because I talked about it in one of the videos. And according to sources, the president also held another meeting, individual meetings, with Kalonzo Musyoka, with Gideon Moy, with Moses Wetangula, with Alfred Mutua, and with Professor Kivota Kibwana. And he directed them, or requested them, to support Raila Amolo Odinga for the presidency in 2022. In this video today, I want us to look into details of the specific issues which were discussed during that meeting. But before we do all those, if you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I just know, don't know how to thank you guys. You are wonderful people. The previous few days, you've shown me love by sharing the videos, giving them thumbs up. I want to appreciate that because of that small action, most of the videos have actually done so well. Now let us get back to business. What is President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga's game plan for 2022? I did a video about that. The IBC, the judiciary, the handshake, the tribal dominance. But what is President Uhuru Kenyatta up to? I want to assure you one thing. That President Ru Kenyatta is keen on only one thing. Stopping the Deputy President William Samoy Ruto from succeeding him as the next President of the Republic of Kenya. The good thing is the Deputy President is also aware of the President's schemes. And is actually working around them. But President Ru Kenyatta is the current President of the Republic of Kenya. Which means he holds state machinery. In this country, for example, Raila Odinga has always contested. His supporters believe very strongly that he's not been able to be declared the president of the Republic of Kenya because of lack of state machinery. And the mere fact that the president was in Mombasa, and while in Mombasa, he invited Raila Odinga for a meeting. He also invited Fred Matiangi for a meeting. Fred Matiangi is like the Prime Minister in quotes of the Republic of Kenya. He also invited Amos Kimunya, the majority leader at the National Assembly. That's significant. According to sources, President Ru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga, together with uh, Fred Matiangi and Kimunya and some other guys, discussed this five issues. Number one is the unveiling of a grand coalition in November. President Ru Kenyatta is keen on supporting Raila Molodiga. And I've stated on this channel severally that if there is one thing Raila Molodiga must pray for is President Uhuru Kenyatta's public announcement or endorsement. The day President Ru Kenyatta will endorse Raila Molodinga, the entire Raila Odinga stronghold will be re-energized. Because this stronghold believe that if there is something they've done, is to vote for Raila Molodinga. So this time around they were like, why should you vote for Raila Molodinga when we know so well that he's not going to be declared the president? So the fact that the president is willing to support him will re-energize the base. But what is this grand coalition which is to be unveiled? Kanu 
entered into a coalition agreement, post post election agreement with Jubilee. And that's how someone like Pogisio became the majority leader at the Senate. And because of, uh, of that arrangement, several other allies of uh, Gideon Moy were actually nominated into various government positions, including even one commissioner at IBC. Jubilee Party also entered into a coalition agreement with WIPA. When WIPA dissolved or agreed to disengage from NASA, they never disengaged with Jubilee. So they also have some arrangement. I don't know about Ford Kenya, but for ODM, they were not ready to enter into coalition with Jubilee sometimes back. But of late, we've seen an ODM party which is so keen, ODM party which is so keen on engaging into a coalition talk with Jubilee party. So basically what's going to happen is that the moment the coalition agreement between Jubilee and uh, ODM is finalized, then President Ru Kenyatta, according to his own wish, would have wanted to support one of the NASA core principles if the NASA core principles were going to accept to nominate one. But Kalonzo probably is in. Muslim Davadi has said he's not willing. And probably this is why he was not invited to this meeting. So this super alliance is likely to include Kalonzo. It's likely to include Weta for the Bungoma area. It's likely to include Professor Kevuta Kebwana and Alfred Mutua to consolidate the entire Ukambani region because Ngilu is already in and probably other ladies and gentlemen outside there who will be unveiled at that particular meeting. Because I'm looking at a situation where someone like Joho would come on board, Matiang is likely to come on board in Western Kenya, either Paranya or or uh, the Minister for Devolution, Eugene Omalwa, you go to Central, they'll bring someone who is likely also to be the deputy, I don't know, but the truth is, these guys are going to unveil coalition agreement. The second thing these guys discussed, which has really hurt President Ru Kenyatta's rating, is the opening of the economy. When the last update on opening of economy was announced, most Kenyans were really disappointed. Because most Kenyans had hoped that President Ru Kenyatta was going to relax some of the measures, containment measures. And this COVID thing has really hit this country so hard. Businesses are closing down. Then you have one year to the election. People are not going to work. Yeah? Businesses are not operating normally. For example, clubs and hotels are working up to what time? The, the effect is that Tanga Tanga guys were taking advantage of that. And President Ru Kenyatta met with Raila and they agreed that the country is likely to be opened. And that's why after that meeting, there was this announcement on Matatus now to carry full capacity. Matatus was considered to be one of the super spreaders. Now that they'll be carrying full capacity, what does it mean? The moment the economy will be opened, so many people will be pleased by President Ru Kenyatta. The third thing they discuss is 2022 general election. How are they going to win? Or how are they going to defeat William Samuel Ruto? What are the factors? Who should we bring on board? Should we leave out Muslim Lefadi or should we leave out Kalonzo? Who should we bring on board to ensure victory? So that's number three. Number four is a cabinet reserve. I talked about this last week and I'm repeating. The moment President Ru Kenyatta will leave Mombasa, it won't take long before a cabinet reserve. This is the time for the president to focus on his legacy. Today, he has only 365 days left. A day like this, next year, 
will be going to the polls to elect a new president, new governor, new member of parliament, new senator, new women rep, and a new MC. So they discussed. Maybe the IBC preparedness. What should IBC do? Because I've seen IBC has released some figures here that the elections will cost 40 billion. You know, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. 40 billion to conduct an election. That's according to IBC. That's the money they need. They only have, I think, 19 billion, according to them. So why is... Why is why is uh, election in this country so expensive? So the truth is, President Ruki Nyata is likely to reshuffle his cabinet. Who is he bringing on board? One or two people from Raila side, one person maybe from Gideon Moy, Kanonzo Musioka, just to make them feel part of government. And this the president must do because without doing it, he will be sabotaged. His agenda. He will be sabotaged. Number two, there's a chance that someone will go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we have only one year to undermine him. So he must do cabinet reshuffle. The last thing which I know was also discussed is the link between William Ruto, Museveni, and Harum Ayadin. This guy has been de deported. But what next? What next? What is the link between Ruto Mudavadi? And that's Ruto Museveni, I mean Ruto Museveni, not Mudavadi, sorry. And this is where I'm trying to figure out the role of Fred Matiani in this meeting. He's the Minister for Interior. So when this was being discussed, probably Fred Matiani was there. Because remember, William Ruto issued a statement. Probably he knew that Matiangi was in Mombasa meeting with the president. And in that statement, he warned Fred Okengo Matiangi. And that's going to form the basis of my next video. Why I strongly believe the deputy president should spare Fred Matiangi the attacks. And direct them to William Samai Ruto. Sorry, and direct them to President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. I don't know what you think. But in my view, those are some of the issues which were discussed in this particular meeting. For those who are watching this channel for the first time, take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Bye-bye.